Thank you everyone for joining us here this afternoon um, and good afternoon. I am joined by our Chief of Police, Dave Nislight, our Fire Rescue Chief, Colin Stoll, our City Council President, Georgette Gomez, Dr. Joel D'Onofrio Odman, who's our City Medical Director, who works closely with our first responders and all of our first responder protocols. Uh, we want to update you on new actions the City of San Diego is taking to combat the spread of the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. <clears throat> These actions are being carried out in cooperation with the County of San Diego Public Health Department. We do not make these decisions lightly. However, they are necessary to protect our community. I would note here at the beginning uh, that I've spent uh, the day speaking with all of our council members and Council President Georgette Gomez, as I said, who is joining us here today. And I appreciate all of their partnership during these difficult times. Uh, now I want to talk about the new directives that affect the city of San Diego residents and businesses. The county of San Diego earlier this afternoon issued a directive for the region. And I want to emphasize that the following, that this will be in effect in the entire city of San Diego as well. I've signed an executive order that takes many of the recommendations that we have heard from the state and federal governments yesterday and today and puts them into law. First, all bars and nightclubs in the city of San Diego shall be closed to the public. Unfortunately, of course, this means that will affect tomorrow's St. Patrick's Day celebrations. But this is not optional. This is mandatory. And I will have Chief Nislight follow up on some of the actions our police department will be taking to ensure this compliance throughout the city tomorrow. We will be aggressive in enforcing this because this is about the health and safety of San Diegans. I can't stress that enough. Second, all restaurants and retail food facilities shall be prohibited from serving food or allowing food consumption on premises. In other words, no dining in restaurants. Restaurants and retail food facilities can continue to operate for the purposes of preparing and offering food to customers via delivery service, pickup, or drive through. And even in those cases, restaurants are directed to establish social distancing practices while customers are waiting for pickup. This does not affect grocery stores, pharmacies, food banks, cafeterias, commissaries, or restaurants located within nursing homes or similar facilities. We are also allowing vehicles that deliver food to grocery stores to be exempted from any restrictions on delivery hours so we can support grocery stores as they continue to replenish their food supplies. Third, residents are strongly discouraged from participating in any and all non-essential gatherings. This implements the guidance given by the Centers for Disease Control earlier today. Fourth, all City of San Diego public buildings will be closed to the public. This follows the directive I gave last week that closed city recreation centers and libraries on Monday. And finally, the city is narrowing its focus to maintain essential city services. These core services include police, fire rescue, water, and sewer service, trash, and recycling pickup. That will be our focus for the foreseeable future. Other services are going to be scaled back. And those employees will either be working from home or taking on other duties that we need to support the essential services that I just outlined. San Diegans also should know that no one will have their water discontinued. There is a moratorium on water shutoffs now. And given the severity, of, excuse me, given the economic severity of this crisis, we have suspended interest on late water and sewer bills. We are also actively exploring other options to help San Diegans that will be experiencing economic hardship. And we will have more of that in the days ahead. All of these orders go into effect at 11.59 tonight and continue until March 31st at 12 p.m. unless they need to be extended. <clears throat> and I will also end by saying that we've been working very closely 
with the county and the San Diego Regional Task Force on the homeless to protect those living in our streets and our shelters. <clears throat> and thanks to the partnership of the county, and I was at one of our bridge shelters yesterday with Supervisor Fletcher, we now have nurses at our bridge shelters that are actively monitoring for symptoms, taking the precautions necessary, and that is happening at every bridge shelter across the city of San Diego. These public health nurses are now part of our outreach teams. It's not enough just to help the individuals that are in the shelters, but we are going directly to those that are still on the street with all of the essential outreach <clears throat> information and help. I will conclude before I turn it over to the chief by saying that the health and safety of tens of thousands of San Diegans is on the line. That's why we're taking these common sense precautions. They are serious actions, make no doubt, but they are taken because without action, there will be serious consequences. This is all being done to protect our friends, our families, our parents, our grandparents, particularly anyone who is a senior citizen. The bottom line is if you can stay home, do it. And I strongly urge every San Diegan to follow the guidance from the CDC, follow the directions from the county, and obey these new laws now here in the city of San Diego. I want to introduce some of our uh, speakers, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions. First, I'll turn it over to uh, Chief Dave Nislight on what the San Diego Police Department will be doing and our posture towards these new regulations. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, I want to thank you all for being here and good afternoon. I want to assure all San Diegans that the San Diego Police Department is open, we are fully staffed, and prepared to handle any emergencies that you might need from the San Diego Police Department. I also want to kind of calm everybody's nerves. During this time that we've been dealing with COVID-19, we have not seen a increase in crime. In fact, our radio calls or our calls for service have stayed very consistent and it's something that we're monitoring on a daily basis. So I just want to make certain that nobody thinks that we're seeing a, a spike in crime, because we are not. I really want to heed the advice to all San Diegans that we really need to follow all these mandates. These mandates are here to keep San Diegans safe and to limit or, or eliminate the spread of this virus. So when you hear these mandates, uh, of bars and restaurants, we need you to follow those mandates. It's to keep not only public safety safe, but it's to keep all San Diegans safe. I also want to just warn the citizens that as officers respond to calls for service, you might see them wearing what we would say are PPE or personal protective equipment. Please do not be offended by that. They might ask you questions as it pertains to your health, if you're experiencing a sickness or anything like that. That's so we can make certain that you are getting the appropriate care that you need, but also making certain that we are staying safe so we can continue to serve the, the, our communities. And lastly, on the mandates on these bars and restaurants, I want to let you know what you're going to see tonight from the San Diego Police Department as it pertains to these new mandates on bars and restaurants. You're going to see officers from our vice section and officers in uniform making contact with many bars and restaurants to educate them on what is coming and the enforcement posture we will be taking with this. We ask everybody to follow these mandates and follow the closures. Uh, we will also be following up on a complaint-driven process, uh, and you will be uh, given a notice of violation if you do not heed these, these mandates. And with that, I'll turn it back over Thank to you. the mayor. Thank you, Chief. Uh, now I'd like to uh, have uh, Chief Fire Rescue Chief Colin Stoll come up and uh, say a few words about the actions of our Fire Rescue Department. Chief. Well, thank you, Mayor, and thank you for being here. Uh, I also want to echo something that we are fully staffed. Our firefighters, lifeguards, and paramedics stand by and are prepared to respond to the same emergencies with the same level of service that we always have. We have implemented protocols, operating procedures to, uh, to identify high-risk patients, to protect ourselves from exposure and transmission of the communicable disease, to better prepare and to better service the city. In order for us to provide this level of service, we have to look out after the first responders and the protection of them as well. We have implemented protocols to, for our own protection so that we can continue to provide this level of service in the weeks to come. 
We know that this may be around for quite some time, and looking at our, the health of our first responders needs to be a priority so that we can continue to provide that level of service to our residents and to our visitors. We have educated our workforce. We have made sure that we are able to recognize the early exposures of our personnel to make sure that they are followed up on and receive appropriate treatment. So I can assure you that not just the city of San Diego, but we are working with all of our regional public safety partners to make sure that we can get through this emergency together and continue to provide the level of service that we have and we expect in our city. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I really appreciate uh, the support of the council president and all the council members as we are working together at one city during these, uh, during these times. And with that, I will introduce uh, Council President Georgette Gomez. Council President. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. I'm a strong support of the measures, of the measures that the mayor just announced as proposed, because I believe that it is the right thing to do for San Diegans to ensure that we're not spreading the virus. But this epidemic was already hurting people financially, and the mayor made statements of that, throughout our city and across our economy. It's affecting some of our most vulnerable community members and families, individuals, and small businesses. We all must, we all must acknowledge that these new measures create even more urgency to act immediately to protect people, especially those that are most risk and devastated financially, it's financially hardships. Tomorrow, I will hold an emergency city council meeting, not only to ratify the mayor's declaration of the state of emergency, but also to discuss with my colleagues a comprehensive package of proposals to protect our residents, including stopping residential evictions to occur due to non-payment of rent, stopping evictions and mortgage foreclosures on housing authority properties that occur due to non-payment, stopping evictions of small businesses under commercial leases, providing relief for individuals and landlords who have suffered several loss of wages and income, stopping and utilizing shutoff of, of late fees and non-payments, delaying the collection of business tax certification fees, ensuring that we enforce our earned sick leave and minimum wage ordinance, opening hotel rooms to our unsheltered individuals and families with supportive services, exploring a moratorium on city vehicle habitational ordinance, and calling for a halt on immigration enforcement operations, including entering checkpoints in sensitive locations such as hospitals, clinics, and other healthcare facilities. This is really important to ensure that we are sharing safety for all residents of our city. To many of our residents and families we're already, that are already struggling under the weight of, our high, of the high cost of living in San Diego, this is to ensure that they feel that they're supported by our colleagues here in the city throughout our communities. And we are making sure that we are protecting our community residents, but also ensuring that we're creating a safe community for all. And the intention today is working very closely with our mayor and ensure that we are here and ensuring that our community is working strongly to ensure that we're creating a safe space. So my office is ready to do the work needed to ensure that we are creating and we are reacting to the needed reactions to ensure that we're creating a safe and healthy community for all. And we're asking all residents to please cooperate and ensure that you're staying at home if you're able to. And if you're not, to please call us to ensure that you're getting the necessary support from our community. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Uh, and last up, I'd like to uh, introduce, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Dr. Joel D'Onofrio Odeman, who's our city's medical director, who uh, works closely with all of our first uh, responders uh, and yeah. all of our protocols. Doctor? Thanks for being here. This, these are unprecedented times. And from the medical community, we have been working around the clock together from 911, the EMS providers, the ERs, our hospital floors, ICUs, around the clock. These mandates that are coming out are going to help slow the spread 
and as we've all heard, flatten the curve. So if you think about it, how many of you know people over the age of 60, health conditions, young children who have respiratory problems? By the mandates that we're doing right now, and by avoiding other people, social distancing, washing your hands, if we can slow the rate of contagion, then our hospitals can help take care of the number of sick patients that we're going to get. We can already see what's going around, and these measures and mandates are going to make a difference, and we're, it's going to help save the lives of San Diegans. So from the healthcare facilities and EMS, thank you so much for everyone getting together. This is a huge community collaboration to save lives, and these are unprecedented times, and we look forward to continued collaboration and working closely together with everyone. This is, we're all in this together. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Uh, lastly, before I take questions, just wanna reinforce something that I think is incredibly important. We are a very resilient city. Uh, in times like this, when we come together as San Diegans, when we come together as family members, friends and colleagues, um, it's about helping each other out. We've been through other emergencies before and we've come out on the other side. This one is unlike any we have experienced. We are going to meet this moment. We're going to meet this moment as a city. We are going to get through this. We have some phenomenal uh, professionals that are really rising to the occasion to help make sure our city is functioning, to make sure we are protecting people, and that will continue to be our watchword. So I ask all San Diegans to heed this, there's no doubt in my mind we will get on the other side of this. Um, and these uh, measures that we are outlining today are done with one goal. How do we get on the other side as fast as we can? With that, I will pause. Uh, I'm happy to answer uh, any questions. Mayor, yes, sir. Chief, can you talk about uh, enforcement of some of these mandates for bars and restaurants? Are they going to begin at midnight tonight? Are you going to have crews out there just kind of going around there? Repeat the question for those who may not have heard the, uh, have the chief talk about enforcement issues. Happy to do that, chief. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, tonight, although it won't go into effect tonight, tonight we're going to be out doing education. Both officers in uniform and our vice section will be going out and contacting as many businesses, you know, restaurants, bars, to let them know what the mandates are. Uh, and then moving forward from there, uh, we will then go on, whether it be a complaint driven or if officers see a bar that they know is supposed to be closed, they will use a health and safety code section to do enforcement. Uh, what we're really asking for is cooperation, is these mandates are here for a reason, and it's really to help all San Diegans stay healthy and safe. And so we're asking for everybody, we understand the financial hardships, but what we're asking for is think big picture, think about wellness of this community, um, and to, to heed these mandates and to close. Is there a punishment, is there a fine or something that's going to be given? That will be something the courts will have to decide down the road. And quick question in terms of uh, if you can clarify just the restaurants, like there's bar and lounge that has a uh, liquor component and restaurant component. Uh, can you clarify for a lot of people who have questions with regards to that? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's pretty clear restaurants can't have anybody dine in. Uh, so bars would be the same thing. Some bars do serve food, but primarily if they're a bar, they, can't not, they cannot be open and you can't be serving food and beverage at the same time. So that would mean bars would have to be closed. And so that will be part of the educational process that uh, detectives from the vice section and officers tonight will be going out and answering those questions, providing the health and safety code that will be used so everybody understands. Again, we want to make certain that we're educating folks uh, and then moving forward, asking for cooperation. But if those that don't want to cooperate, then we will have to move forward on enforcement. But again, that's not our wish. And one other question also is, uh, I know it's kind of obvious, but a lot of people are talking about civil liberties when it comes to shutting down restaurants and, and having things like this happen, this uh, quarantine, quarantine issue. What do you say to those folks who say that this uh, treads on our civil liberties? Yeah, I appreciate that. This is, about the issue. Uh, this is about protecting people. It's about saving lives. And this is about taking all the steps that are prudent and necessary uh, to help stop this as quickly as possible. We haven't had to do this before. This is unique. It's not a decision that I take lightly as mayor, but it's one that's necessary to protect our city. That's my job, that's my duty. That's what we are going to do, working on this together. As the chief, chief just said, we are expecting everyone to comply. Uh, this is not optional. 
This is mandatory. And our officers and our police department will be out there to ensure this compliance because it's in the best interests of everyone. Yes, sir. I wonder your thoughts on what San Francisco has done. Are, are we to that point? Is that what you're seeing today? Raise us to the level where San Francisco Yeah, I, I think one of the things that we uh, continue to do is I've really stressed this in our, with our county partners as well. We speak with one voice. Um, not only the city of San Diego, the county of San Diego, and all of our other jurisdictions. We're going to make the decisions uh, based upon the facts of the ground here in San Diego County. Um, these are the decisions that we have gotten to today with guidance from some of our, as I said, federal CDC and others. That will continue to change. That will continue to evolve. Um, and so we will be flexible, we will be nimble, and we will make the decisions based upon facts, working with our city and county public health officials, again, with one goal, uh, how do we protect people in the best way possible? And is it possible, though, that a citywide lockdown could be something on the table? We're going to be flexible and nimble to do anything that we need to do to really help protect families. And so this is, this is a fluid situation. Um, it's, like I said, it's designed to making sure that we're, we're taking the steps that we need to necessary to have an immediate effect and to ensure that we have the enforcement in that. And I can't stress that enough. And that's uh, the work that our, our uh, police officers, our men and women who are going to be out there tonight. Uh, the chief has done uh, a lot of preparation this afternoon, uh, getting ready for this announcement. Uh, as I also heard of our fire rescue chief, uh, Chief Stoll, and I can't say enough, as we are scaling back some other city operations to focus on essential city services, I cannot say enough about the men and women that are out there that are wearing the badge, that are keeping us safe, they're going to make those runs day and night. Um, they represent the best of who we are. We're lucky to have them. Go ahead. Um, in Lisa. light of efforts to try to help the homeless population yeah, that's extremely vulnerable here, have there been any discussions about changes to enforcement? I know obviously City Council President Gomez had proposed uh, you know, relaxing vehicle habitation enforcement, but could there be changes to other types of enforcement that affect certain vulnerable we're going to look at everything with one goal. How are we keeping uh, those uh, men and women that are on the streets and homeless safe? Um, it, it, again, having the, the assets that we push so hard for, the, both us and the county, uh, and successfully have our public health nurses not only in the bridge shelters, but actually on the streets. Uh, we're going to be taking all steps that we need to necessary uh, with one goal. How are we identifying? How are we move people that may have symptoms into a safe and secure environment? Uh, that's our goal. And that continues to be one of our largest focuses. Um, all the discussions that we are doing every day, Alpha Project, St. Vincent de Paul, Father Joe's, uh, VVSD. Um, and I really can't say enough again about our homeless service providers um, who know uh, the conditions that unfortunately many of these folks have. And so we're really doing everything that we can to protect them and we will support policies that do that, Lisa. So will you Yeah, all of our efforts are going to be done to what steps can we take to help get people that help, that support, and working with our county and a city medical to say, how do we make sure we're helping people and keeping them safe medically? Yeah. Does that include suspensions or at least a temporarily stopping payment on like a moving violation or a parking ticket or some other? Yeah, we will be uh, we will be announcing uh, help in terms of uh, parking and parking meter tickets. We'll be announcing that a uh, little bit later on uh, this evening. Um, again, as the council president just said, uh, this is going to be difficult times. It's going to be difficult things financially, and we want to make it easier for folks to not only stay at their house, and their residence, not have to worry about a parking ticket, um, and not have to worry about things like your water getting shut off. These are remarkable efforts that we're taking that we haven't ever done before. It's the right thing to do. Question. Yeah. The question is for Chief Nesla, if I can. Yeah, Chief. Um, with people heading out, maybe, if they decide they want to try to head out tomorrow night, knowing that there's restrictions, if they're going to bars and for some reason they wind up there past midnight tonight, <coughs> tomorrow, I know we've talked about enforcement, but if I'm somebody who's really determined to go out and have a good time tonight, or tomorrow night, what real ramifications, I guess, could there be? Or if I'm somebody at home determined, is there nothing really to stop me? Well, these mandates are for the, the establishments. They're not for individuals. Yeah. Um, so again, that's why we're asking for the cooperation. That's why we're going to try to get out in front of this. 
and do as much education with all the businesses that are impacted, such as the restaurants and bars, to really, one, ask for their cooperation, and two, allow them to understand what it is exactly we're asking and what authority are we using to do that. Um, and so that's why we're here. We're asking for cooperation. Again, we're doing this looking at big picture with the goal of protecting all San Diegans and really eliminating and reducing the spread of this virus. And so I understand what you're saying, and that's why you're going to see officers out there. Uh, well, obviously, if we walk into a bar tonight at 10 o'clock, not in effect yet, but we're going to educate not only, obviously, the establishment, the manager, the owner, whoever is there, but also uh, those that are there, the clientele. We'll, we'll be advising them that the bars will be closed. It sounds like San Francisco has considered things like misdemeanors. Is that something that, sure, we could consider at some point moving forward? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. I mean, absolutely. But we're hoping for the cooperation is what we're really asking for. Other thoughts? Yes, sir. Uh, not, not essential. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah two quick ahead. questions here. Um, one, do you, uh, you, know, you started off by saying that there isn't a spike in crime. Uh, are you surprised by that? Is there a reason that you started off by saying that there, there isn't a spike in crime during this period? And then uh, second of all, when you guys are out there, a question for the first responders here, when you guys are going out uh, into the public, are you guys wearing protective gear? I know you mentioned some safety protocols. Yeah. Uh, what, what are those things? Uh, no, great, great question. I'll have both chiefs uh, answer that. Um, and again, I think when it comes to what we're seeing uh, in terms of San Diegans, and as the chief mentioned earlier, has been no spike in crime, um, I think that represents the best of our city. Um, our officers are out there. We are fully staffed. We are out there day and night. Um, but what we're doing with fire rescue uh, in terms of the runs and everything that we're doing, um, full levels, full staffing. So ensuring that everybody knows that we have dedicated men and women that are going to be there. If you have an emergency, uh, that doesn't change. Uh, we are taking some extra precautions when it comes to our first responders in terms of protective gear. And maybe I'll have uh, Chief Stoll reinforce some of those. Chief? So as the mayor just mentioned and I spoke to earlier, we have implemented new protocols and procedures for us. And some of those involve our personal protective gear, what we call PPE. Um, we do, we have enacted new medical screening now at our dispatch center to ask appropriate questions for following the signs and symptoms of flu-like flu symptoms along with the COVID-19 uh, virus. We also ask the questions about travel. However, we have now really seen that travel is not a key component there now, a, a determining factor uh, with the community spread. So with that, our personnel now who are responding, our, our firefighters and paramedics are on the front lines. They are the first ones to encounter these patients and are certainly the most susceptible to being exposed. They are now taking the extra precautions with the masks, the goggles, the gowns that now that we, uh, that we wear for those. But we are also taking on a different approach to our patient assessment and going into some of these scenes and making sure that we are limiting our exposure and how many people are exposed to these patients. And no longer are we sending all four people in to assess this until we get a better idea of exactly what we're dealing with. Because as I mentioned, if we can't provide the level of service and keep protecting the community if we can't stay healthy and safe ourselves. And so we need to uh, make sure that we have implemented those practices to keep our personnel safe. Thank you. While you're up there, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, has this impacted your rotations at all? As of right now, we have seen no impact to our staffing. Our personnel have stepped up. They they know that this uh, what our role is as first responders and our commitment to the communities, and so we've seen no impact in the staffing so far. I've got two questions in my ear. One was, does, the, uh, does this affect gyms? Uh, not at this point, uh, but I'll LA tell you. Fitness and all that kind of place, they're asking if gyms will be open. Yeah, they have to conform to the guidelines of, of 50. Right. So uh, can you repeat your question, sir, please? So what's the, what are the uh, requirements with uh, workout gyms? Uh, no gatherings of 50 or more. Yeah, so 50 more, right? the mandate is no, no gatherings 50 or more. So it's up to them to regulate the gym. Yes, correct. People in the gym. Correct. Okay. The next question is asked, what about the, any casino? casino? Not at that? this point. In the yeah. city of San Yeah, no, no, this doesn't city apply. I had to ask. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can look inside also uh, the city of San Diego, just your staffing. If I understand correctly, there's an email sent out on Friday saying all employees had to report to work. Did everybody have to report to work? Or uh, what, 
likely to take effect in terms of for, for the city of San Diego itself, Mayor, um, was there was everybody required to report to work today? Yeah, and we, we, that has changed. Yes, is, is the case. Uh, we've made some changes this afternoon based upon guidelines. Uh, as I just mentioned, we are going to be focused on essential services primarily now. Police, fire, water, um, wastewater, trash pickup and recycling. Um, that's going to be our, fo our focus. We spent a lot of time on that today with our continuing of operations plans. We call them COOPS uh, to ensure that these services continue even if we have a reduction in workforce because of the virus. So we've done a lot of planning. All of those department directors and others got together for several hours uh, yesterday. Again, it's prudent to have that planning uh, because we want to make sure that these essential city services will continue um, into the foreseeable future. And just one quick follow-up. Uh, so for the non-essential people, they still had to report today. Yes. Yeah, we, we've made that change today. And as I said on Friday, I closed uh, uh, libraries and rec centers. Um, this continues to be an evolving um, a process and one that we do to ensuring that we're protecting our employees, taking the steps necessary as many of them now uh, work from home, uh, making sure those lines of responsibility are very clear. Um, and this will likely continue to evolve. Um, but as I said at this point, our focus is on essential city services. With that, I want to uh, thank everybody. Any of us will be available for any questions one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and we'll have further updates tomorrow. Thank you very much.